and now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for September the 6th. Well, today across the wide world of tropics, we have two active tropical cyclones, those being Major Hurricane Larry in the Atlantic and newly designated Tropical Depression 95W by our analysis. It has also been named uh, Tropical Depression Jolina by Pagasa. On day 249 of 2021, so far we've had 61 tropical storms form this year and that is likely to rise a couple digits over the next few days. In the Atlantic Basin on day 98 of Atlantic hurricane season, we have Larry well out to sea in the main development region, not likely to make landfall in any uh, islands as a tropical hurricane force system, although it could bring some storm force impacts to potentially Atlantic Canada. And 91L is entering the Gulf of Mexico tonight, expected to uh, not really have a great chance of forming, 20% is what we're giving it um, over the next five days. In the Eastern Pacific on day 114 of hurricane season, we have Invest 96E, which was designated earlier today. 80% is what we're giving on that over the next five days, 30% in the next two. And another area of interest to its southwest will be generally tracking just south of due, uh, due west. 30% uh, is what we're giving on that towards the latter part of the five day period. Um, in the Western Pacific, we have 94W generally tracking northwestwards. A uh, 50% chance of formation as that one does so. And 95W, again, we're calling it a tropical depression. And Pagasa has named this tropical depression Cholina as of a few hours ago. In the northern Indian Ocean and southwest Indian Ocean, there are no storms and no areas of interest active here. In the Atlantic Basin on, uh, let's see, the satellite imagery, the main two features here are hurricanes, uh, Hurricane Larry, I should say, and the big plume of Saharan air that came off the coast of Africa, keeping a tropical wave that came off at bay. Uh, thankfully, I'm sure none of us are complaining about that. And you can see 91L over the Yucatan Peninsula producing uh, marginal amounts of thunderstorm activity. Looks like it may also be dealing with some slight wind shear from the northwest there on that imagery. In the eastern Pacific, you can see thunderstorm activity is increasing towards Mexico. Uh, that is associated with Invest 96E. Again, that's more likely to become a tropical cyclone within the next five days than not. So if you're in a place uh, along the Mexican coastline and maybe even the Baja California Peninsula, I'd keep a close eye on 96E. In the Western Pacific, you can see the thunderstorm activity associated with 95 and 94W are looking pretty good, looking a bit better as we look towards 95W. And I'll be very interested to see what the full imagery of visible, the full visible imagery shows uh, over 95W once we finally get that imagery out. In the northern Indian Ocean, the general monsoonal activity, as you'd expect this time of year, is keeping tropical cyclone formation at bay. And in the south Indian Ocean, we can see little bits of thunderstorm activity towards the equatorial region. No signs of any tropical cyclone activity here. In the sea surface temperatures, you can see for both eastern Pacific systems, sea surface temperatures are piping hot, ready to go. Same for the Atlantic Basin for 91L, uh, Larry, and another any other system that tries to form in the Atlantic. Uh, in the North Indian Ocean, it's generally the same as last night, 28, 29 degrees Celsius generally, with a pocket of 30 degrees Celsius in the Northern Bay of Bengal. And in the Western Pacific, it's generally 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, um, and piping hot, ready for those two uh, systems, 95 and 94W. The sea surface temperature anomalies you can see in the Western Pacific and North Indian Ocean generally above average in the western or sorry in the eastern pacific i should say the coastline of mexico is generally looking above average except for a little portion of the central part of the coastline as you head further towards hawaii it goes near to below average maybe some signs of a la nina trying to develop there in the equatorial regions and the north atlantic is pretty much above average the area of below average that was uh, brought on by ida is also recovering by the way on this day, on September the 6th, 1996, this one may seem a bit crazy to a few of our viewers, and it's been 25 years since Major Hurricane Fran made landfall in 
North Carolina. I know, it's hard to believe, but it has now been 25 years on this day. And 8L was also behind it, that would become Hortense. And Tropical Storm Sally was active in the Western Pacific, would become a typhoon today, and would go on to become a Category 5 Super Typhoon north of Luzon in the Philippines. And as we look towards the naming lists, we have uh, the potential for a new one in the Atlantic, but it's not all too likely. The next name here is Mindy, followed by Nicholas. In the Eastern Pacific, it's possible we see two more names, that being Olaf and Pamela. In the Central Pacific, we're still, still, still waiting on Hone. In the Western Pacific, we're more likely to see at least one of these names be taken up by either 94 or 95W. The next two names are Constan, followed by Shanthu. In the North Indian Ocean, the next two names are Gulab and Shaheen. We're not likely to see those two anytime soon, though. In the Southern Hemisphere, the next two names in the Australian region are Patty and Ruby. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Betsirai. In the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody and Dovey. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.